So I don't know. I think it's just going to be a flop now, but I hope it's good otherwise. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really happy to be here, and I'm really happy that all of you here. We've all worked really hard this summer, and it's really good to be able to share this with all of you. So ah, let's not stop looking at Joe's people, probably. We've had enough of this. <laughs> let's go look at mine. It's much better. <laughs> This is my e-portfolio, and uh, I began it with a uh, quote by David Copperfield, uh, not by David Copperfield, <coughs> by Charles Dickens in, his, in the novel David Copperfield, and in, in which he wrote uh, a highlighter right here. Whether I shall turn out to be the hero of my own life, or whether that station shall be held by anyone, by anybody else, these pages must show. And that's really what I'm trying to uh, get wrap my head around when I'm speaking to you today, because. None of my success, nothing that I brought myself here, that I've got myself, was from my work alone, from my effort alone. I've had the support of an immense amount of people. Of an immense amount of people. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about myself and where I come from. Uh, I, gr I graduated from high school with a 2.9 GPA. I was uh, a caricature of the smart but lazy character you see on television shows. And, I really had none of the motivation or drive I needed to succeed academically. And so like countless other aimless high school students, I enrolled in a community college. And uh, while I was there, I, m I met Professor Ashman in uh, my first calculus course. And it was in this class that I was really challenged. I was really motivated and drove to succeed. And I did so, and I succeeded in his class, and I succeeded in the next three calculus classes I took. And I succeeded in all my classes, and that has been, a, and his influence has been crucial uh, in bringing me here. I'm bringing me here. Him, my parents, my friends, my family. I wouldn't be here if not for them. So whether the uh, whether I shall be out the hero of my own life, or whether that station shall be upheld by anybody else, I think I can answer that now. Um, but. While I was, uh, Professor Ashman even has a more direct role in uh, me being here at Europe today. Because earlier this spring, he told me uh, after a lecture that I needed to come up to his office, that he had something he wanted to show me. So I came up to his office and he showed me an email he'd received from John Vasquez, the director of Europe, and to tell me, and showed me uh, that Europe was recruiting and uh, they wanted Ashman to send any good candidates their way. And uh, he also told me the deadline was in 10 days. So I quickly put together an application as fast as I could. And it was rather rushed, but, and so I thought my chances were slim. I wasn't very optimistic that I'd be admitted into this program. So I had backup plans. I registered for classes this summer. I, uh, I lined up a job. I was going to lead discussions for a trigonometry course at my community college. So I had things to do in case, you know, I wasn't a, uh, in case I didn't get into Europe because I really didn't expect to. I thought this program was too competitive for me and that I wasn't going to be accepted. So imagine my surprise uh, earlier this, uh, earlier this, later this, that spring, when I'm walking out of my Calculus 3 final and I see an email on my Blackberry. Yes, they are paying me to say that. <laughs> and so I pull out my phone and I look down and I see a new email from John Vasquez informing me I've been accepted to the URAP program. So I turn around and walk back into my classroom and tell Professor Ashland that I've been accepted. And he congratulates me. And I walk back out to my car, beaming. I'm so excited. And uh, But after the excitement passed, the nervousness and the apprehension set in. I was incredibly nervous because I wanted to do engineer research. But I had not yet taken my first engineering course because OCC didn't offer any of them, my, my, my community college. And, uh, so I didn't know what I would be able to do this summer and if I was going to be qualified to do research in engineering. But I had the support of the, uh, the staff at Europe, my peers here, and my friends. And I was able to find a great sponsor to work with, Professor Bernitzis in the Marine Renewable Energy Laboratory. And I spent the last uh, several months, uh, the last 10 weeks, I should say, working with him in the Marine Renewable Laboratory. And that's him pictured uh, there, standing in front of the uh, previous prototype of Vivace. Vivace is the device I've been studying for the past 10 weeks, and it's actually it's Italian, and it means lively. But it stands for Vortex Induced Vibrations Aquatic Clean Energy. And this is, a, this is a renewable energy device that works really, really in a really innovative way. 
Uh, it relies upon a phenomenon named the vortex-induced vibrations. And what happens, and I'll show you a great visual here. Uh, what happens, as you see in this image, water is flowing and colliding with the cylinder, which is only supported by springs um, that is immersed in the flow. So as water collides with the cylinder, it creates a high pressure uh, region due to the stagnation of the flow. And in its wake, where the flow is no longer moving, it creates a low pressure region. So as the water swirls in or comes in, seeking that low pressure region, these vortices are formed above and below the cylinder. And as the cylinder sheds these vortices, it begins to oscillate with the help of those springs that it's attached to. And, as a, and that oscillation, that vortex-induced vibration, is what we can, are able to harness uh, and generate an electrical current from using generators. Um, and I want to show another really great visual of this process um, here. This is an image taken by NASA. Uh, it's a beautiful image. Let me zoom out a bit. You only get cloud cover here. Uh, you see in the bottom right corner, you see an island. Uh, this, this is an island in the South Pacific Ocean, that little green dot right there. Uh, it's named the Alexander Sir Kirk Island. And this happens in many islands across the world. But this is a beautiful image, and I just wanted to highlight it because it shows really well what we are what we are using to generate electricity. Now what is happening here is you see these vortices coming off of the island and the same way that it, and the same, this, and for this exact same way that uh, our cylinder cream, uh, relies on these vortices, the same phenomenon is occurring here. These vortices are created by the high pressure, uh, the, by the high pressure air seeking the low pressure air behind the island. The air in this uh, image is actually moving from the bottom to the top of the image. And uh, this creates these vortices and uh, above and below the island, if you notice, if you pay, uh, look carefully, you can see that they alternate between clockwise and counterclockwise because they're shedding asymmetrically from the bottom and top of the island, uh, left and right of the island in this image. And uh, that, this exact same phenomenon is what we're using to harness electricity from flowing water. And uh, the reason I'm so excited about this project is because uh, is because of the impact it could have once it comes to fruition. Once we fully understand this technology, it could it could have an immense impact on our environment. It could do great things for us because unlike uh, fossil fuels, unlike nuclear energy, is safe, is clean, and it's not dangerous. And, and unlike other hydrokinetic energies that are currently be studied, being studied, it's efficient and unobtrusive. Um, if you look at dams that are built across the world, for they are huge, unobtrusive. And they radically change the landscape. Vivace is different. Vivace can be immersed in the water, and it can be scaled down to work at any size, from miniature to scales as massive as this. If anyone ever undertook a project that large, and uh, it's perfectly scalable, and it can work well, and it doesn't, and it doesn't impede the river, it doesn't interfere with it, and it doesn't harm the marine life, and it doesn't affect the environment. And in fact, it's more efficient than a lot of existing technologies. A uh, turbine, for example, needs a, needs, to, uh, be moved, needs a current around three meters per second to work efficiently, or nine feet per second approximately. Uh, whereas uh, Vivace works at a quarter, at a six of that speed, and has, we had it operating at a, a half meter per second efficiently, generating a, and we're able to generate electricity for really slow moving currents. And that's great news, because the majority of the currents, oh, uh, currents in the world whether they're ocean currents, rivers, or tides, are less than three meters per second. So we, uh, and they are an abundant resource. And uh, that's why I'm so excited about this project. But what I'm, but the best part about all of this is that, like uh, Jerry stole from me, uh, is that it's not, it's, it's not ending for me. I'm going to be able to continue being a part of this project and uh, continue doing research at the University of Michigan. I'm transferring here in the fall, and I'll finally be taking my first engineering course, so I'll be making that progress of becoming an engineer. And uh, I'll continue to be a part of the Marine Renewable Energy Laboratory, and I'm immensely excited, and I'm really thankful to everyone who's been a part of this. And uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you all for coming.